All right, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning if you're on my time zone, and afternoon if you're in Pepe's. <laughs> Welcome to Send Out Podcast 13. So this is the first type of episode I've done like this before, where we've followed up with a sip after it's passed. But we have, that is exactly where we are right now, and what we're doing today is we're following up with the sip that passed uh, some weeks ago, so Magic Palette, it was the first community sip, and it passed with an uh, overwhelming majority of a 99% yes. So, um, welcome back, Pepe. Uh, this, I think it's been podcast number three or four now, so almost in the very beginning. Now, yeah, we're, at, we're almost awesome. 10 That's episodes right. later. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Keep pushing. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Lansing. Um, super cool to see things evolve uh, around the Sandow podcast. Really cool guest lately. Uh, tried to watch all of them. And um, yeah, things going well. We push development of Magic Palette as fast as we can because we know everybody wants to get their hands on. Um, our app, and this is great, um, we have um, completed phase one of, uh, of our SIP and now working on phase two. And with phase three, we already go live um, with the beta version that you can register here on our um, uh, magicpallet.io page for or just drop your email there and you get uh, get on the list. And after that, we want to go public soon, kind of, for everyone out there. And, and for those of you who uh, don't recall, uh, Pepe from Sandrush, SIP number three is, or excuse me, SIP number six is, is yeah, what Magic six. Palette. And, and uh, he's been the, the lead designer, the person who's pretty much running in as, as the face of it all and the, the sand rush team the disclaimer is that San pepe and i are not giving financial legal advice nothing we say is to be taken as that and you know what? how about we just roll right into it the today the point of today is to demo the magic palette so from start to scratch uh I'm an amateur at this, and I'm also if if I were to use Magic Palette, how what it would it look like? What will we do? And that is the whole point of today. So for someone who has very little experience in game maker and box editor, as a, a person who owns land, how do I use Magic Palette? Pepe, let's go through it. What do I do? Sure. Yeah, that, that's, that's great. And I think a lot of people will stand on the same or are in the same position as, as you are. And they, they would love to start creating and just can't um, wrap their hand around how to get started. Because still, I mean, the, the how do you say, the, the tools that the sandbox provides us are quite approachable i would say uh with box edit and uh, game maker but then again for um, for various reasons we when we did productions uh by our own or especially in collaboration with other people and this is often happening in in game jams or in in full-scale productions for clients and all that we had a hard time to to keep pushing um, on Game Maker when it comes to level design, and therefore we have developed Magic Palette. It was first just a little helper tool um, that did allow us to come in with a different approach and. The, base idea that Magic Palette gives you uh, at hand as an artist or designer is that you can design your levels now in voxels 
and transform them with the help of Magic Palette into blocks. So this is what where the magic is happening. Um, it is a bit a, a a shift when 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 it comes to create your lands and your your ideas and levels and and games. Uh, but it's once you you get the hang of it, I think it's ha it has huge benefits because it allows you to model design create your land in a very different way and in, especially in a, in a fast uh, iterative way that is non-destructive um, as we know in game maker you you work with blocks and you can quite nicely um, work already with blocks there are not that many tools sadly when it comes to the block design um, but when you remove a block or add a block it's it's kind of final and if you want to shift for example a land mass a few blocks to your left you just need to rebuild everything and all that type of stuff so this is where magic palette has um huge benefits if you if you make um your your lands first as a minimap and i think this is what we want to do today we just start i i asked Lancer before we we start this uh, the stream or I'm planning this episode here we I'm not sure if it if it takes us three episodes but I imagine somewhere around that so the goal is in today's episode that we start with a concept with an idea going from the pre-production um we call this pre-production where you you flesh out the whole concept the uh, the the design the mood the the game mechanics i mean this is not the focus of today's episode probably and will also not be in the in the further episode because this is a is a different part of the design process in my opinion it it all goes hand in hand but we fo focus on designing and and building the level so um after pre production we would build a mini map for this I would use Magicka Voxel. It's uh, one of the free available um, Voxel tools that is quite powerful. You can also use Voxedit <clears throat> or Cubicle or other Voxel editors for this. Um, it, it might make sense to note this here. Magic Palette is not a, an editor or a Voxel editor per se. <clears throat> you can edit some stuff, but it's not meant to replace these tools. It's also not meant to replace the the game mechanics or the asset dressing that you do then later in Game Maker. So it's it's this chain in between your voxel worlds or voxel creations and designs and transform them with the help of Magic Palette to to a full uh, fleshed uh, level design in game maker. Okay. So far, I've heard step one is we start first with a concept. So that's kind of like when yeah. when you asked me, "Hey, what do you want to start off with?" And I said, "I want to do an island of mm -hmm. water." So is that the concept? So we already done with step <laughs> one. Yes. Let's dive in. I think this is exactly what we do right now. Every idea starts with with a few. Um, a few first um, sentences or, or uh, how do you say, uh, a concept. Um, I have gathered based on your, um, you shared me, I'm not sure it was here. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Should be good there now. All right, let's. Where, where we left off was we were talking about the design process. Step one is we start first with a concept. Step two is build a mini map. What's step three? Yes, <laughs> step three um, is going, I still can see the screen. Can you guys hear us? Yeah, yep, I, I can hear you and they, they can hear you too. Okay, maybe I need to restart as well. Um, so the 
the next step when we when we did build the minimap um, will be followed up with going to Magic Palette with our with our minimap and transform this into a block based build. From there, we have the chance to um, add custom blocks or things that we want to um, kind of iterate. So we go a bit. Usually, we go back and forth in between our minimap model and and uh, Magic Palette. But also soon after, we would um, load our map into Game Maker because there we can test it straight away and find out how everything is working as intended and if, if we need to make changes. So it's it's usually a process that is really uh, in the intersection in between these three um, programs. So your Voxel Editor, Magic Palette in the middle, and Game Maker as the final output. Kind of. Okay. Load it in map and game maker, and then once you load it into game maker, it works just like you would normally would. You'd have to do the logic and the system and all that. Exactly. Okay. Then okay. you're at the dressing. Um, you start <laughs> adding uh, logic and all that. Um, okay. That and makes sense. Yeah, that's that's the process usually. There are various improvements that we already have in the works. For example, we work on a system where you can play in a very uh, simplified version, but you can play your level already on your browser. So you don't need to go to Game Maker to test things. Um, as I said, we don't want to replace Game Maker, but this is, a, we think, a very helpful feature that we want to push until we're going live with the with Magic Palette. Um, it reduces these um, kind of these loading times and all that. We know things can load quite a bit. Um, and um, so this is one thing. And the other part is that that we just improved our voxel importer, for example. So we now have the option to import models that are sliced um, in various objects and they don't need to be combined. This gives more flexibility when working with the with the minimap. Gotcha. But more of this uh, just in a minute. Um, as I said, these are just a few. Uh, maybe I'm not okay. sure if you if you can so, share your screen again. Um. Yep. Go ahead and share your screen. Oh, yep, I can see. see it. Okay, so they can see you. You can. So what what is what are we looking at right now? What is this part? Good, great. So right now we're looking um, at Pinterest, and yes, exactly. So this will be the concepting phase. Okay, we so we're in the concept do, phase. Yeah, we do a mood board. We do. We find out what the client wants to to have as a, as a as a mood and and idea built uh, on. And you describe me something that you would love to have islands, floating islands, kind of this tropical vibe, or or at least yeah. a, a very cozy, chill vibe. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. for your experience, that would be. In the end, it would be a, a, a farming simulator, or did I get you right? It, it'd just be like you kind of swim around and be more of a aesthetic sort of thing, at, like looking at the view. Mm, okay. So all about the scenery, yeah, the, yes, yes. The, the, the environment, kind of a, right. a, a really a cool place to explore more. Right. Okay. Right. A, a lot of water, though. A lot of water exploring. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, we talked about floating islands at some point. Um, this could be quite a cool concept, I think. That one, if um, you want... down to the left, where it says Sao, Sao Louis, to the right, to right, right next to it. Nope, left, uh, left, sorry. up, up one, up, up, uh, up, up one, that one, this one, nope, down one, that one. <laughs> um. That one looks really cool. 
Ah, it's kind of a pond inside of a. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I see. That's a, that's a cool concept. I like that. My boy can get it larger. Okay, so if I were if I were approaching Magic Palette, the first thing I would do is find a concept that works for me. So if we choose this one, okay. So what do we do now? Yeah. Um, yeah. Now this is we cool. I like this up. one. <laughs> you like it? Cool. Yeah. So we have a kind of this this whole castle, huge castle walls around uh, a city structure or yeah, whatever. And some island inside of the of this harbor pond or or section. Um, I also like it. It's quite rough. It's it's almost like an oil painting, but um, the idea is cool, and we certainly can work with this. So after we we nailed our concept, or we kind of have a, a better idea what we are looking for, we would start. Um, one of our voxel editors. As I said, I'm used to work with Magic of Voxel. Oh, give me a second. That was the Magic of Voxel. It, it's a Vox editor, like Vox Edit is. It's exactly like Vox Edit. It's just um, a more, um, I would say, a bit more powerful because it allows. It's something that I just had here for another tutorial. But let me open a new one. Um, it's um, it's it's a voxel editor that is open source. Uh, mm, it's not open source, but it's free. I'm not sure it's open source. Ah, I wouldn't need to check on that. But it's free. It's um, developed by one guy. Um, he did put a lot of effort into this. Um, it's quite an amazing piece of software, in my opinion. Um, it has similar um things that you can do or or uh, work with when when it comes to um voxel voxel design or or as a voxel editor it it can be compared to box edit of course okay um it okay. just has a bit more flexibility i would say a bit more tools and Especially it has, for example, something that is called shaders. I can show you this um, later down the road because it allows things that are almost impossible to do by hand or otherwise. And these are so kind once of I choose small... my, my concept art, what, what do I do next once I have my Vox Edit open? Yes, exactly. I have my Vox Edit, or in, in our case, I have my uh, Magicka Voxel open. I start a new scene. And to give us an idea, it's important that we define the, the top right corner here. We define the space, kind of. And since each voxel transforms into a block, we need to a kind of work with the the dimension that the sandbox gives us when it comes to land creation. And as we all know, each land would be 96 by 96 by 128 is the max height. And as you see, this gives us this um, bounding box that then becomes kind of our maximum volume that we can work with when it comes to one land. Um, I just take a color so I get an idea. Um, how many voxels or blocks these are actually. And you can see them here when I zoom in. And this is yeah, it might be a bit hard to see. The lines are really thin. Um, but this is this is our base dimension for one land. We, of course, and I just mentioned this, we can now stack some, or not stack, or align some, some of them and make, for example, a two by two, you know? Um, but we always want to stay within these boundaries. 
um, because uh, once we publish it, this will occupy the space or kind of the, the amount of land that we um, can work with. And a one by one is what? 96 by 96 by 128? Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. Um, for this epic design that you did choose, I almost would tend to say it would be cool to go two by two. Um, just sure. as an example, it gives yeah. us a bit more room. We can to do play two by with. two. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Magic of Voxel can support up to three by three if it's not super complicated uh, geometries. Um, so if you're using Magic of Voxel, does that conflict at all with using or needing to mint anything through or upload anything through Vox Edit? Well, in the, no. In the end, it's just uh, we work with the Vox format. As you see, we can uh, save here you know, if we want to save oh, the project. And then, and then you upload it or then you yeah, upload exactly. it to we can, Vox Edit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. You can you can upload it in Vox Edit, work there. You can export Vox from Vox Edit, from Cubicle, wherever you are most comfortable with. And this is the the strength that we also bring to the artists and and the designers. I think with with Magic Palette, it allows you to build and design where you are best at and 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 where you're used to work with. You know. Um, for me, it's 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 Magic of Voxel because it's one of the uh, tools that I did choose. And for, for me, I haven't even work. heard of Magic of Voxel until you just showed me. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fine. And now we <laughs> we dive right in, so that that's perfect. You will you will learn quite a few uh, hints and tricks hopefully today. Um, but this is great. Um, there are quite some other cool. Um, I actually started to learn Voxel modeling with Cubicle. It's another software that you can, for example, it's on stream uh, available, for example. Um, it has some cool features as well. So each modeler has a bit of its own ways to handle things. Uh, that's the only difference, I would say. And as I said, for example, here we have the opportunity to use shaders, okay. which Vox uh, Edit doesn't do. The maximum bounding box in these softwares are usually 256. And as I, um, with a two by two, this is no problem. We can now combine this one and we have a full two by two um, uh, plane here uh, now. So a two Maybe by two would be a 192, 192. by 192 yes. by two, yeah, exactly. two, one, what, 128? 128 is always the max height. This okay. is a it. bit sad, but we uh, this is the limitation that GameMaker gives us. So okay. we never can exceed the the height um, and do super epic towers. I mean, it's it's quite a bit already, as we know. Um, but it's the limitation that we have. Cool. Um, let's take a peek again. So basically, since we are working with blocks and with blocky shapes, we would do it maybe not that roundish um, and more like a bit uh, staggered volume. So we for sure want on one side, we want to have land mass where we can build a city or a cool, a cool um, castle or whatever. Then we have the city walls and the sea. So let's see, maybe <clears throat> if we keep this as C level, um, it makes sense to, uh, to make the C uh, with a bit of a depth, of course. Um, but I actually think it might make even sense um, to remove the C at this point um, and start with the land masses. For this, we we'll just pick a color. Um, when it comes to working with colors, I loaded here just a random palette. Um, you can create your own palettes. You can create, you can use one of the standard palettes. You have them here. Um, you, you even can work. I recently worked with a gray, gray tone uh, 
updated palette because in the end each palette uh, each each uh, color swatch here in the palette becomes a block you will see this in magic palette uh, afterwards it's not that important what colors you use for it in in your creation process the more the, the most important thing here is to remember each color becomes another block so if you want to diversify your um let's make a sample here again based on the concept drawing um if we want to have the city wall um built out of a, a brick block a stone brick block this needs to be one color the the top of the wall for example we might want to cover in a bit a different stone block this needs to become a, a different color but the color itself can be assigned or the block can be assigned in magic palette afterwards so this is um, we are quite free when it comes to um, working with our own, uh, what did we? I think I did load this one. Okay. Uh, with our with our own colors and ideas, and afterwards we tune them or tweak them so they work well. Okay, uh, let's start blocking out uh, with I would say um, let's say the, the the land masses in our case. Um, we need um, so after after you've created the two by two in this case then mm -hmm. you start blocking out the concept art yes exactly i think that that's the 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 usual way when when you start with with any level design okay. and um I will just start here because I have usually an even um, more or faster approach to do this. Because you see here, we now already have tons of tons of, of, of blocks and can go um, quite detailed, which is this nice. This isn't even Magic Palette yet. This is just Magic of Voxel. Yes, this is just whatever Vox can Edit you, or this can be Vox can Edit. Can you do the same whatever. thing in Vox Edit? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, totally. Right, got it. So as you see, we can carve in quite a, a few details already here and get us started. But when it comes to uh, level design, and this is why we call them minimap, I usually start with even a uh, much smaller kind of size and scale it up once I have it blocked out. So in this case now, we divide our what was it 19. have we started the mini map yet or is we we haven't done that yes we we, we just build a mini mini map kind of now because this is the oh, fastest way. oh okay <laughs> okay this is the fastest way in in my opinion to achieve a, a concept uh really really in no time yeah um let's go maybe in, uh we, we need to just divide our 96 uh let's go i mean 96 maybe 48 yeah let's try 48 48 um height is not that important right now because we got don't go super tall so we go um whatever uh, 60 um and I afterwards will scale this up four times, and then we once again get the full land. But the so cool what, what thing is the here point is of having now, this I work smaller with one? Much with with really just a few voxels, you know, um, and can can work on on creating land masses um, really fast and also don't go into the danger or i would say that the problem is if you if you start big you can get tempted to go into details really fast and um sorry what, what's the uh, point of creating this smaller one 
the, the, the point is that you will be much faster uh, okay. with, with level, level creation. Because if okay. you start with the large one, as you see here, um, it's, it's just taking you more time because you need to push more voxels in the end, you know? And the oh, idea because is... You have, you have more of a, a, a... You want to go into more detail. So, so then don't... Yes. Mm. Yes, exactly. So, so you're the, saying the, start the, out I... with a mini-map. Don't even start out with creating the, the two-by-two yet. Exactly, because oh, we're just okay. concepting kind of in a mini mini map, as you see here, what we want to build. And once we are happy with the basic dimensions, with, with the proportions, with everything, we then push it to a larger scale and refine it and build the details on top of it. You know? Okay, that, that so was lost kind of on a... an amateur like me. Hold on. So first thing you do, <laughs> go into your voxel editor and create a mini map, which is what were the dimensions? Um, de uh, depends on your land size, but for now I, I go super small. It's, it's 48, 48 by 48 by 60. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For example, that's just, two. Uh, All right. So once you're done that, then, okay. then you, then you do a block out, but on a smaller scale. So you have less to go into detail on. Yes, exactly. My my intention here is to just get the um, get get us the idea of of this concept um, kind of fleshed out or blocked out. This is probably the correct term um, as fast as possible. So from there we then refine um, because. Um, if, as as mentioned, if I go here, uh, you you can see I already want to start building the wall here, um, and all that, uh, which is nice and neat, but it it it's it's um, it's a lot of details that we can already dial in here, with just very simple um, cubes or or forms um and then refine it over time yeah. okay so now you've you've done so you're doing the block out on the mini map first and then scale scale up. yes okay, exactly got it. yeah that will be the the base idea so okay. we kind of st start here with this idea of having this harbor section and where the the ships needs to sail in i would say we might have we might want to stagger this a bit more. Um, but the base idea is here, I think. We have a bit of elevated landscape. So like a low this. resolution block out. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's kind of small scale and then we scale up. Um, okay. I would say this is already I'm, I'm um, learning a lot already. I I've never done this before. <laughs> Okay. That's great. I mean, that, as I said, this is this is coming with with working with Magic Palette because it allows you to design differently. And we think if you get the grasp of it and the hang of it, it that there's no no going back. Okay. <laughs> At least in, yeah. in our case, we yeah, it, it just makes level design when it comes to a block based um, game so much uh, easier and approachable. And and Mark from Sandbox Academy is in the chat. Mark, do you also do a mini map block out like this, or do you just go into the the, the big uh, normal one by one sizing? But keep going, Pepe. I just I wanted to hear what Mark was sure. doing in the chat. Yeah, that would be great to hear some other creators how they approach this. Um, I huh? did hear from other people that they are doing this even without access to Magic Palette so that they can concept things and i know for example from tsb production team that they actually always do this it, got it it's a it's it's something that is really helps a lot to define the base idea and and push the concept further and and give everybody um something to work with you know gotcha. before they start okay. being game maker mm -hmm. But it's um, yeah, so, so 
I think every, every artist has has its own, um, how do you say, um, workflow, probably, in the end. Um, this is just something that we sing. Mark says that he goes directly to Game Maker when terraforming. Yeah, yeah. And until now, it was the only option, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not. Uh, until now, it was the only option. So this block out with the voxel editor is because we're going to be using Magic Palette. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Cool. Got it. Got so it. you see, we have a mini mini map. I mean, let's render this one out quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, the landmass styled in, I would say. It's a bit um, rough. Uh, it even has this little cave here. I just did see. <laughs> but that's cool. Maybe we use it later. Um, and from there, I would say one thing that we we could now already add the, um, uh, the, the walls, the city walls and all that. I'm not sure if we want to do that because I want to work with shaders and then yeah, we yeah. need we, to we don't. select. That's fine. Yeah, we the could, city is optional. We, it, it can be as little as we need it to be. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of having a, a kind of this enclosed um, yeah. Yeah, uh, biome in itself or so. So yeah, maybe we make um, like the, the surrounding edges of like a cliff or something if that's easier to do. Yeah, no, we have we actually have quite cool blocks to do super nice medieval city walls. Um, okay. So I'm I'm Got happy it. to try these out. Um, one thing that I might want to do here because we all want to swim, and swimming can only happen if we have a bit of depth in our sea. Um, I would select all my my stuff here, and push it up. Raise it up. Okay. Yeah. And um, raise, um, oh, make it a, okay. a bit, you know, you know. Yeah, I see. Give a bit of depth. I, I, I think this could be. Yeah, Try, so, um, so. give it a lot more depth. Because I wanted to be able to mm -hmm. go swim deep. Under, underwater. That's cool. That's yeah. good. Um, let's do a, a few a few caves and all that. Okay, then, great. That you can yeah. explore. And we can even, because we would don't have that um, much. Oh, of course, the city walls will add a bit, but we yeah. still have plenty of room. Um, um, let's go like All this right. then. Yeah. Cool. Um, and we even can already carve out a bit of, um, yeah, underwater or you make this seem so easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean that that's that's the goal, yeah. That you really can flash out your ideas as fast as possible, you know. For example, the I really like the cave idea. Um we of course can refine this here in voxels yeah, that's, or that's later fine. in blocks. Fine. Um as I said, the power here is to move everything really fast. So for example, if I go everything, I even don't need to select and move the whole the whole land a bit to the side, you know, it's just like that. And in Game Maker, this would be impossible. You know, gotcha. you, you just can't. You need to rebuild everything. Um, the the flexibility that you have here is uh, so much higher um, when it comes to blocking out. Okay. So Got it. maybe maybe let's carve in some more cavities here or whatever. I mean we don't need to go into details, but something to explore is always neat. Um and yeah, that's good to go. Right. Um one thing we for sure want to have is um sea <laughs> or water. This can be any blue. Um, let's see if we can. So, for example, here is, is a good occasion to use shaders. Um, there is a shader called flawed here. Uh, shaders are this code bracket. Then you can install them. I actually just uploaded yesterday. 
a tutorial on this. Um, and we will add many more tutorials similar to what we do here or explain, for example, height maps and things like that. So further tools that you can use as that you as your as designer can use to design levels uh, like these in a, in a very fast and cool way. Um, the, <clears throat> the thing is, we can flood this whole scene. And as we know, for example, once again in GameMaker, working with water and building underwater blocks or underneath water blocks is quite a pain in the whatever. So um, <laughs> this is is a huge time saver here. And I can show you this quickly. It's, it's quite simple. We just choose a color. Um, there is a brush. I'm not sure if it's called. I have quite a bit of um, blood. Yeah, and we define the height. <clears throat> In our case, it's above, we want to have the sea level around here. So that's probably, let's try something, <clears throat> no, 15. And you oh. see, just out of the box, we have how, wait, everything. How, how did you do that? So you create a shader? Yeah, no, the shader itself, you can download on a source online. And as I said, you can uh, check our YouTube. So I just have uploaded. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the of the shaders. So um, there are so many cool shaders, and I, I hope okay. I can show you some. Create a flood later shader. On. Got it. Yeah. All right. The, the cool thing is, it floods really everything that was air before. So it, it's exactly what we want because you know uh, I can remove some layers now, and as you see. Oh, I see. Uh, I see. It, the, the whole the cave like and all a fill that. Is, tool. Yeah, exactly. Just okay. fills everything. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is exactly what we want, you know. Okay. Um, we even could raise it mm, maybe a bit, at least one more, probably. Let it run again. Uh, sorry. Yes, I like that. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's neat. I would yeah, say. Yeah, no, that looks good. That looks good. Um, and from here, we just um, for now we make a copy because it's always cool to preserve your your um, your initial design when you want to um, alter things there again. But one thing that I would do now probably is already scaling up. Um, because we have blocked out, we are happy with the base dimensions, and we want to throw in some more details now. Okay. For this, we could go double the size, or we already can go full two by two uh, land. And uh, this would be, uh, we don't need shaders now, we need, okay. Um, so this would be two times. And you see, we now have uh, 96, 96. So this would be already a one by one, a full one by one. So you, you would scale up as you desire, or is there like a? Yes, exactly. Okay. Just and then as you scale you up, then you, you improve the block out. Exactly. Then you, you dial in more details, you know. OK, this is this is really up to, to you um, how you prefer to work. Um, this is just one of the suggested workflows that we here in uh, Sandrush uh, in our studio and uh, work with. It's it's really up to everyone's preferences. Got it. Um, and actually, if we go full two by two, we get now, and that, as you see now what what I meant. You know, we have I see. Um, the same. Uh, it's now. Yeah, but it's it's kind of the the full two by two that we started before. Got it. Uh, but without without the temptation to to do already all these details here, I we, see. We have a very nice block out, you know. 
just out okay. of the box. That was my intention here. One thing that I see now, top right corner, um, is the max height is almost maxed out. We are at 124 and we only have 128. So we might push everything down just a little bit, just to be sure that we can okay. build walls and towers and all that. That would be my suggestions here. Got it. Uh, okay. We can. That's the funny thing here. It, it cuts off, of course, but that's fine. The orchard, and then we we just do most of the job. So we 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 have a bit head of of headroom still. And um, but the rest of it is fine, I would say. It's it's, it's certainly something we can work with. Um, and um, yeah, maybe before everything crashes, uh, it's quite stable <laughs> usually. <laughs> but no, so it it does yeah. crash on you. Uh, no, no, Magic of Oxel almost never crashes, but uh, uh. Just to be sure, you know, um, would be a shame. Got it. If we are if we are in and then need to stop and start again. Um, so we have our space here and that we did define. And from here, I now start not only blocking out, but even more de start detailing and also assigning my colors because the colors become the blocks, you know. And this is is um, a process that can start here uh, in the voxel model, and at some point I would load it to Magic Palette soon, because it gives me an idea of where I need to make. For example, let, let's let's use this this uh, as an example. I would choose now. I would uh, choose the whole C because this is good. Um, I remove it and save it as a separate entity. And you also see <laughs> that we have this is the swim swimmable area. You know, if we render this out, you can see this is where your diving experience will happen for now, at least. We we always can uh, adjust and alter this, of course. Uh, the thing is, I want to apply now. A gradient shader on our let's call it rocks or terrain or maybe it's even dirt or i don't know it depends a bit on on the choice of materials um to give us a really nice looking um, landscape afterwards in game maker uh, this can happen there are various ways as well i apply um, a paint based shader now and use a brush shader with a gradient and you will see in a minute what this does we need for this we need to choose a few um uh, a few colors let's use it's a bit of wild palette actually to work with but i mean we can go colorful as I said, um, I would even have darker here, this one. So we choose a few colors and then apply a shader. This thing is with shaders. Um, it can be applied dynamically. That's quite cool. So you can I have the full box here. We have a few shades already in, and there are different modes. So I think it's four. And if we start dittering, yeah, oh, you okay. can see. So this allows us to so add some gradients. color var variety. Yes. And this is not about the color variety. This is more about we want to um, to um, have a block a gradient in our in our land masses. You know. So uh, as you see, um, 
we we if if we would use this one here, we now have the the chance to have a really natural looking terrain. Um, it, it looks a bit quirky here right now, but once we assign blocks, you will see this this can look quite nice, and it gives us depth, you know, which is quite cool. Um, I might it even further. Yeah, here you can see it best on, on full scale. So um, and that's just one of the shaders. We also can, of course, there's a lined one. Yeah, this one. This can also be quite cool for canyons, for example. So if you want to do a sandstone canyon or whatever, you know, you could do something like this. Remember that. Quickly, higher resolution. So mm. like this, you know, uh, it it looks quite uh, colorful now. But as I said, the colors are not that important. It's just important where they are assigned uh, on on the level. You know, it, this is far do. easier and more accessible than I thought it was. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's great to hear, mate. Um, it's, yeah, it's, as I said, it's a bit of rethinking of the whole idea when it comes to, to start with your level design. Um, but it, 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 it can go fast, and that's the cool thing. It, it really, we can now iterate really, really fast. Mm, okay. And going back and forth. Um, I kind of like... This one, not that bad, actually. Um, I still want to apply the other one. It gives us quite nice um, radiance. And this, for example, oh, this is another option. I think we used this one. Yeah. Actually, like the last one, this one is also quite neat. It's almost like the, this old school graphic dittering type sure. of pixel yeah, that dittering. Good. That looks fun. And uh, you can imagine um, if we want to do this effect with blocks in Game Maker, you are in for the hundreds yeah, you have to of go hours. in and individually do all that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. But if it's you, just, oh, because you're using yeah. Magic Palette, and you do this in box uh, a voxel editor of your choice, exactly. you can you can do that much faster, and you can do that in the way you're doing it right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. That's the idea here. So it's gonna make it much cool. easier. Whereas uh, Mark, Mark said that he just goes straight into to uh, to Terraform within Game Maker. If they instead choose to do that, can you still use Magic Palette, or do you have to do it this way here? Um, um, I mean, we always can go back and forth. So that's the power of 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 the whole workflow here. We, so if they don't this... if they don't want to use a voxel editor to build a mini map, mm -hmm. they instead want to build yep. their mini map and block out in Game Maker. Can they still do that and then use Magic Palette? Um, actually, they can, yeah, because yeah? they can okay. export from okay. Game Maker. So yeah. There you go, Mark. This you can still use it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. That's that's uh, we 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 have or we we want to have a much as much compatibility as possible with with okay. any software that you work with, you know. So whether you try um, and do it in, as ease of use in a voxel editor to import it in a magic palette or game maker, you can then import what you built and or block out in game maker into magic palette. So either way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got either it. way and going back and forth as well. And even, I mean, I, I, I might not have mentioned this and this comes probably in a later episode. You also can start adding mechanics and uh, dress your um, your land with assets and all that in Game Maker already, and still go back, even back to your voxel model here that we have. Iterate full land masses, change things, 
and then go back again to GameMaker. Okay. So that's the idea. So you really, really have the flexibility to to change things even at a later design stage, uh, quite drastically if needed. You know. Got it. Okay, I'm gonna cool. adjust my little steps here a little bit. So instead of going straight into Vox Edit, you build a mini map within Vox Edit or Game Maker, and then when you finish your so right now, then then we go into finishing your block out, whether you're doing it Vox Edit or Game Maker, um, and then yes, add your shaders and your gradient gradient and your dither as desired. Okay, what happens after you're done? This looks yes. good. Let me just assign quickly so that it looks not that quirky. Um, well, it's almost a bit too dark, but to get a bit you're adding a lot better. more gradient. Okay. Uh, less. Uh, just need to hit. I like spot. I like the underwater to be as bright as possible, so that I can still mm -hmm. see. So kind of more okay, okay. I see the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. So less... I don't want I don't want the caves to be dark. I'd like them to just be able to see the scenery of everything. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this in this case we probably even go more like sandstone or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue. No, that'd be great. Sandstone. Mm -hmm. All my Minecraft people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's we the only can, reason why I know can... what sandstone is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here we have Henry nice. Sandstone. That looks awesome. I love that. Looks good. Yeah. Cool. 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 That's awesome. I also like sandstone, by the way. Actually, one of our artists is is working on on a sandstone block set right right now. I hope we can have it ready for the for the next episode. Miguel. Um, cool. Miguel just asked, "Can Magic Palette?" Uh, Magic Palette, will it import all new blocks in the Game Maker block library? Um, the thing is, and we will see it in a minute, I, I think we 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 just um, um, finished the block out and then make a short glimpse into Magic Palette for now because a lot of people came for this, of course. Um, and then in the next episode, we, we go into, into details and technical details when working with Magic Palette. Um, when it okay. comes to custom blocks, we actually right now developing a system where you will be able um, to load your own blocks on top of the huge collection that we provide. We provide right now, it's around... 1,400, I think it's almost 500 blocks that we as Sandrush provide to you as builder uh, for free for now um, to work with. So there are many, many, many right. different blocks to work with. But we know every project has its own um, style and, and, and idea. So it's important that we accommodate this and therefore we, we set up a system where you will be able to load your own custom blocks uh, and hopefully in the future even connected with the, with your workspace but for this we need tsb as you can imagine because um yeah like the api connection and all that stuff exactly exactly well hey i have a yes. i have a sip that i'm that i'm cute that i'm starting to put together that is to access the api or to make the api mm -hmm. available um so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm still putting together the full list of, of um, of things that people want to see out of an API. So Pepe, I'll, <laughs> I'll make that available to you and anyone else who'd like to. I just have a running list of the people way smarter That's than me, who would, these are the things <laughs> I want to see out of an API. So the SIP yeah. would basically say for the sandbox team to make an API available via you know, api.sandbox.game or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. we we have a lot of stuff that we would I haven't, uh, love to hook haven't done much in. with that yet, but that's all my my one of my 18 that I want to write. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. so once you're done with that, then you move the water back in. Okay. Yeah, of course we need, we want to water water. And as I said, we now and this is just was just developed recently on our side and now can 
kill this one, but I keep the mini mini map. Um, we we can work with with various bounding boxes or objects. Um, this is quite powerful, and I know also from the TSP production team that they design their maps like this because it gives you much more flexibility later on. You know, if you have, for example, as as here, I have my water volume separate and can um, add and remove things. Um, one thing that we are missing right now is maybe a few, um, let's say, um, towers or um, the, 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 the city wall. So uh, I just pick one color. It might be a bit quirky one, but... Um, and once again, I really only start blocking out these things, you know, because I, I can refine them all the time, you know. I just want to throw in the, the base dimension to give us an idea um, how things could work, how things could look. Um, and as you, as you see, we, we can already, of course, carve in details or, or add more, um, more details from the beginning. But okay. usually Whoa. I would. All right. All right. I see. I see. All right. Yeah. I would have advise to go simple or, or um, kind of blocky. And from there, we, we, we go. I mean, we even can uh, add, start. That, that's fine. That's simple following. enough. Yes, I also would say. Um, actually, You're already, me, just... me, I would just do exactly what you have on the right. There's this big old rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's usually also... Um, uh, oh, I have not the color, the geo. Uh, no, let me see. Why is it... Mm -hmm. Strange. Okay, that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm also um, not. Uh, 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 I mean, I I, I model things uh, quite often, but I'm not super super um, um, the, the 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 pro here. This I have a bit of problem with the ah selection. Yeah. Okay. So now we can start um, using them probably to define the, a bit uh, the outer wall or whatever, and would then um, would then kind of um, block out. The, the city wall as oh. fast as possible. Thank you for the raid. Appreciate that. Uh, yokes cool. on you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Cool. Thanks for joining, guys. We yeah, thanks for joining. If, if you are just joining us, we are demoing the Magic Palette process at this point. Because you, what you don't, what you see here isn't Magic Palette yet. What you see is the process by which you would start magic palette so i'm a complete amateur i asked peppa to do it from the very very beginning and the step one was uh what was step one it was start first with a concept so we pick pick like a island yeah. watery place then two is build your mini map and this was all yeah. part of the workflow of what pepe does specifically uh you you could skip that as needed oh my gosh that's um i just got raided mm -hmm. again Shakespeare, Shakespeare <laughs> thank you for that. Awesome. Wow, okay. Work, yep, and so step two work, was guys. build a mini map, and that was like a low yeah, resolution exactly. picture of what it is you want, want to do, and Pepe decides uh, he wants to do it in Vox Edit Editor so that he can import it into Magic Palette later. You can skip that and do it straight in Game Maker if you really wanted to, but because Voxel Editor, like Magicka, Voxel or Vox Editor has more powerful features with gradients and dithers. Stuff I don't even know. I just learned this right now, by the way. Um, because it has more powerful stuff like that, you can just import it into Magic Palette. 
in a more well-defined um, import. Um, so right now we are finishing the block out in step three um, and adding like a, a little a little cityscape thing uh, before we try and import into Magic Palette. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now just, we're all just, caught up. Thank you everyone for joining. And we are now on finishing the block out. Yes, exactly. We want a few watchtowers um, or similar things. Um, as I said, we go really bare bones or, or minimalistic here. We even don't need details yet. Um, we can refine everything later on. Um, it might make sense to even do this in the small scale already. As you can imagine, it would be it would be quite fast to add these and also already define these um, these towers or watchtowers here. Um, but at some point, you you want to want to go large scale and and for example, for the shader that we applied to the terrain here um it's it makes a lot of sense to to make it in full scale to see the, the full effect that you will have afterwards and thank you again shakespeare for the raid i appreciate that everyone tuning in yes that's awesome cool Thanks for joining. so we added watchtowers now we're going to add the walls <laughs> yeah we added a few walls i actually um Give me a second. And I had him I lighten add. it to sandstone because I don't want it to be like dark caves. This is more to be like a scenic <laughs> sort of thing where you just kind of wander around and swim. And, and that'll that'll yeah, be that. Should, should be all cozy and uh Hey escape friendly. room artist. Good to see you. Hey, hi mate. And Tom Voxel and Go West. Cool. Hey, go west. Oh Hologram here. Wicked. Awesome. Miguel is, is Miguel as well. Mark Bago. Yeah, a lot of a lot of names I recognize yeah, the, from the community. The whole the whole fan family. They're here. all That's eager to cool. see Magic Palette, Pepe. They want yeah, to see what's, so we... what's doing. <laughs> so and, and so without Magic Palette though, you wouldn't really go in to do this in Vox Edit or Magic About uh, uh, right? You wouldn't have any need to do that. Yeah, you would work in Game Maker, of course. Yeah. Okay, you would I work mean, straight in Game Maker. Okay. Yeah, but I explained already a few benefits um, that we have. Hey, if Ross. We do it here. Yep. So, like, um, like I mentioned, he's he's doing it in Magic of Voxel, or you do it in Vox Editor, or Vox Edit. I mean, whatever your Vox yeah. Editor of choice is, so that you can import that res high resolution into Magic uh, Magic Palette. Okay. So I'm sorry. Keep going, baby. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. we're at 27 so, viewers, by the way. So there are a lot of people who want to watch, see this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, the, the, the city world is, is coming along a bit quirky. And we, we definitely um, can dial in a, a, few, a, a few more details and all that. But at this point, I, I really like to keep it simple. Um, yes, please. And you're you're going to go. You're going to yeah, fry my go. brain. <laughs> That's great. Um, um, we we have the C separated as mentioned yep. before, and um, yeah, let's add just or maybe one or two more um, details. We could consider um, um, one thing that, of course, we want to keep in mind when designing our levels it, it should be playable and it it needs to serve the game or the mm -hmm. purpose sometimes it's on, on the assured case uh, as, as we have here it's not very deep into mechanics probably but um it should be playable and for this um i always like to to carve out a few paths and what i usually also do when it comes to um, um uh, actually let me check when when designing these mini maps it's um it's very helpful to um mark your 
your player's journey kind of in the map. So for example, in this case, I would choose just one another color, a bright color. Um, and maybe in our case, it makes more sense to use red or whatever. Um, and mark, for example, where I would love to, to have my my players go. This some this sometimes can also be a, a path that that we really um, paint um, because we have a lot of blocks that can accommodate this. So we have dirt or gravel or or things that we can add later on. And uh, for this, we might use a color um, and and really just start um, defining where where the player's journey can go through. This doesn't have to be super st fixed or sturdy. This can be all changed later on, of course. And uh, also the, the shader that you see here can be reapplied if you need to make changes later on. Um, we came in a bit early with, with these detailing things. Um, makes modeling a bit harder right now because um, for example, if we want to use extrusion based modeling, uh, we, we have a lot of colors here uh, already. Um, but you get the idea. So this becomes now my path and I would um, I would add now a bit of volumes or or stairs or whatever I need to to make this happen. And from there, we once again would would go into defining, um, how do you say, um, buildings, for example, if we want that. Um, buildings can actually be block-based. Um, they don't need to. They can also be asset-based, of course. Um, uh, what we define here is, is everything that, that we want to have block-based um, to, to be built um already in blocks and it it can be often combined i think this is the most powerful way you can do it so kind of use your blocks as base layer oh, or sometimes also like superimpose the asset over it yeah okay exactly oh that's that's so clever. you have the okay. yeah we have for example we had um a, a, a cool experience where we did also walls kind of um and we did um we did uh have a base layer of just gray stones or or bricks um like this in place but on top of it we would add um nice decorated uh pillars or um scaffolding and all that type of deal so you really bring it to life afterwards with your assets you know um, but we see it's quite large scale already because you can imagine your player avatar is like this. I know. So this is this is the size that we see cool. here. Cool. Um, okay. We're working, by the way, on a two so, by two. Um, we, so is this yeah. the block out now? Uh, we're done with the block out. Yeah. For yeah, for now this is right. totally fine. We can refine this. But I would say um, we just um, export what we have right now to get a first glimpse on Magic Palette now. Um, All right, here we go. We... Big reveal. <laughs> yeah, let's save it as um, as Vox. We can import Vox and other formats right now in Magic Palette. I will fire up Magic Palette right now. And, right, and we're coming you... up on an hour and a half. So I'd say yeah. as we get, as we approach uh, the hour, I want to wrap it up into, well, we'll start first episode two. Yes, definitely. I think we only give a quick glimpse here. Okay. How cool. things will look. And next episode, we dive right, So wait, what, what did you just do? You just open it, right? <laughs> I just opened it. Okay, you just it, opened yeah. it. Okay. So not, nothing crazy yeah. yet. So nothing crazy yet. Yeah. Open. I uh, so import I, into Magic Palette is the next step. All right, continue. Yes, of course. 
Um, we are um, developing this further daily. We add a lot of features. We have just hit our first milestones and now adding more features as, as Okay, mentioned. stop for a second. So what, what am I seeing on the top right? I see land generator, pallet builder, block inspector, and then, so that was yeah, the splash yeah. screen you just showed me. Yeah, the land okay. generator, we, we, I mean, we barely can start with this one right now. It, it generates actually a, a, a prefab land, but every time um, generates it based on an algorithm. Um, you have parameters that you can dial in here. You have styles. Um, I will show you this in a second. We start with the dungeon generator. This is already live and working. It gives you... Oh, okay, so um, if you just wanted to not even do the Game Maker or Vox, yeah, exactly. you just go into Magic Palette and here are your presets that you already you and your team developed. Yeah, based oh, on... Oh, so that, on that's the screenshot teams. set that are in the SIP. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now that's I get it. That's one part of Magic Palette. This is for the for everybody that even don't want to touch voxels kind of Got it. blocks. So that, like me, <laughs> because... where I wouldn't even touch voxels, I just come in and hit this one. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right. And now once we are happy <laughs> with the minimap with this one here, we we create the land. See, it makes so much and... more sense now. All right. Got it. Yeah. And then and out, out of the box you get your lava dungeon. You know, and what what is the that, dimensions right now? Because I see squares. This is a one by, this is one by one. This is yeah. a one by one. Okay, got it. Yeah, but I can change now. For example, make natural, make mixed rooms, or even a high density. Generate a new mini map. Uh, let me check, and it creates a new one for you. And each of these is is totally unique. Of course, it's based on kind of building blocks that we did, that me and my team did design for you. Um, but you see that there is a, is a, everything is connected and you can start to you build your dungeon right away. To you. The cool thing on top of here, when it comes to customization, you can now swap um, the theme, you know. So going from lava to ice, ice uh, kind of temple or whatever, um, or, or a bit more quirky type of deal. Um, I quite like this style here. It's, we call it deep sea. So we have these prefab um, themes that you can apply on top of it, you know, on your map. And yeah, this would be a playable map right out of the box with just a few clicks, as you can see. Yeah, give me just a second. I'm zooming in on the the, the right portion so they can see where you. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So you're yeah, you're kind of selecting select. your your mix, so almost like a gradient. Yeah, this is kind of a seam that you okay. apply. Okay. You can go super pinkish and. <laughs> Oh, got sorry. it okay I, yep I makes sense bit, uh, and so you have different yeah. you have different um customizations structure height structure density room size and landscape landscape size and yeah this is if you exactly. if you didn't even want to mess with vox edit or game maker exactly these are the presets exactly. you can just select right out from wow yeah that's yeah. so easy this even i can you. do it <laughs> all right absolutely everybody should should be able to Okay, push, cool. Uh, their, their, their content to their land. Okay. So in but our we case, are him we have yeah, one, and case, then we can we have import our it. own model. Yeah, Got exactly. It. And this is where the pallet builder comes in. We uh, have, this is the sidebar here. We have mm -hmm. the land generator. So this is, we just uh, had a glimpse here. Um, but what we want now is to load our map that we did create before. Uh, let me check. Wait, I didn't, I didn't see it. that. Where's the load button? Ah, top top left. Top left. Yeah. Top left. Okay, got it. So what a little yeah. folder icon. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So once you saved and it, then you can import it via that. Icon. Yeah, we we just need a box for now. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so then so you open load. it. Then mm -hmm. nice. And now it builds our huge 
Okay. 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 Um, Let's. One thing that I just noticed, it's something, it's capping our front portion here. But you mm -hmm. see, it's loaded. Yeah, I uh, see it that. It loads in chunks. That's um, fine. That's fine. We'll just, we'll, that's fine. No yeah, for, for now it's fine, but it has to do something with the orientation okay. here. We just need to. So is that like a bug you need to fix, or is that we, we didn't? No, it it's actually in, intended, but we might be able to solve this uh, programmatically so that you don't okay. need to care on positioning, you know. But right now we, we should um, actually, even if we combine these two, then it should be solved already. Let me save again, and then we will check if it's solved. It would be nice to have the full map. Um, as I said, it's is something that you can um, adjust in your voxel model directly. And but let's load again. See what we get. <sighs> yes, this looks much better. I uh, got it. So that's Whoa. that's what we intended. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now we have. Okay, but what we I think some things are missing, but yeah, by and large we got we have what we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as uh, as we it, know, we're still working on the beta. It's all right. Okay. Yeah, we definitely working <laughs> towards the beta. Uh, so things can get messed up. Um, let me um, load again to to be sure that this is. Um, yeah, I think something is indeed flipped or so something. Not tragic, but um, it's a bit weird to see this because I never had this before. Um, That's all right. That's why we do it live. That's why we demo it. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Cool. So, so, now, basically, so now that we've done that, then so yeah. in the next episode, we can get into what do we do with it once we import it. Exactly. How all we right. assign blocks, how we, we modify our design to to be the, the, the way that we want to have it built in GameMaker in the end. But you can see already here, when I zoom in, there are as auto assigned, sorry, my mouse wheels is, is really fast, um, that it assigns blocks based on my color input that I had coming from, the, from my voxel model, you know. So, um, so it, it automatically can, added more detail? It's not more detail. It's more like each block became now, um, uh, each voxel became now a block. And for example, we oh. just have now our C here. And this will become floating water in Game Maker afterwards. You know? Got it. So, so you're replacing the, those, like the we water assign, block? Okay. Yeah, we assign now the blocks here. This is where where the magic palette comes in. We okay. the voxel become the blocks. And okay, the, so the, you the import work it, and then e each of the like say say the the shader that you applied the water shader, you then mm -hmm. replace that with the magic palette block water. Exactly. So it comes in as placeholders, right. and then you assign and replace the placeholder. Exactly. Well, all right. And if we want, no, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Makes sense. <laughs> so you didn't yeah, have to make yeah. it water. You can make it sand if you wanted to. Exactly. That's the cool thing. Right. This is what I mentioned before. We can work with any colors here right now because we do later on. We do the assigning here, you know, and and okay. and make it look as we want to have it look, you know. Okay. So we will and pick up see, with that in episode two. Uh, which Pep and yes. I are scheduling for early next week. I think we're still deciding on Monday, Tuesday, um, and based on availability between the two of us. So I will yes. post that out via Twitter uh, when the next day is, where we will start assigning blocks to really use the power of magic palette. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Pepe, thank you so much, man. This this was great. I I can already see how to use this thing in in the process flow of of creating an experience even it, just the fact that you showed that that you could select a preset you didn't even have to go through 
the the block out of Vox Edit and mm -hmm. and Game Maker. If if I really wanted to and I had no idea how to do that, I could select like the dungeon preset. But for those of you who do know all that stuff, who, who do know how to use Game Maker and Vox Edit, you may now use Vox Edit in order to create a more rich import blockout model that you then import into Magic Palette, as you see right now, and then you can start assigning blocks. Or you could go the Game Maker route, which is you know the, the painstaking process of it putting down block, 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 block. And once you're done with that, then you can import that into Magic Palette. And now uh, in episode two of our follow-up, we will build it out even more. Yes. That's awesome. That's the awesome. plan. Thank you. Cool. I really appreciate that. Um, now Thanks now I know what it looks like. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate that. Um, does anyone have any questions before we close out? If you do have questions, please post them because we are about to end for today. And while, while we'll spend a few minutes or a few seconds waiting for questions, I'm going to look in the sandbox category on twitch to see if there's anyone that we can raid yeah it's cool tom voxel yeah that's exactly the idea you start with your 96 96 uh just as an asset as as you would design an asset i mean i i worked today in in magica voxel as you see because i'm more used to but um yeah a box edit can do exact the same except the shaders this stuff here box edit can do for example but you still can can modeling wherever you want bring it here apply shaders yeah it, it, it it's really up to you guys um whatever you feel most comfortable with and um in the intersection will be magic palette where you assign the blocks and make your things look as you want to have them look even import your own blocks um or choose from one of the many 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 blocks that we have here yeah yeah and um, uh, cool. voxel looks like so you're getting a lot of um you're getting a lot of kudos by the way from tom voxel and play games and alisor and miguel they're all saying congrats by the way this looks great uh, and Tom and Miguel recommend that I raid Tempest. So I'm looking at yeah, uh, what, Tempest Studios DFW, right? Free live stream in the channel. That's got to be it. Okay. Well, oh, man, we're about to double his viewership. He already has 25. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you all for, for coming here. We have 20 viewers. That's a lot of people awesome. want to look at Magic Palette. Pepe. <laughs> So we we're gonna keep start it up. We keep it up. We push it. Thanks, yeah, guys. So we're for gonna coming. start the raid. Really cool. I will send out the tweet for episode two. And thank you all for thank you all for showing Pepe your support. Um yep, raid countdown. Good. And Pepe, thank you again for your time. Bye guys. Thanks for hosting Lancer.